happy to be with you. Uh, just a few things. Um, I think the presentation was intended to be in full third, so uh, not in 69. So the good thing is that uh, the slides are taking less space and I look thinner myself. <laughs> Everything is great. Uh, my wife would love to see that. Well, um, just to introduce a little bit um, what I'm doing at Orange and who I am, um, I'm very often starting by saying that here it should be working, yeah. Uh, I'm using a few pictures. Um, I was born on the year that the first LCD screen was appearing, of the first uh, Intel chipset, and of the first email. Um, and um, when you see those pictures, suddenly you think that I'm pretty old. Uh, and um, I think that this is one of the reasons I was always uh, obsessed with computers, uh, all those, uh, those elements. Uh, I used to be a developer, um, I used to be a geek, now I'm totally repented. Um, I only do a few uh, HTML lines, so um, consider me uh, uh, now a marketing guy, or I pretend to be. Um, and uh, by the way, if we, ju we just want to measure how the time is moving, uh, the, the year I was born, this was a computer and a phone. So um, it just shows us the, the distance. Well, the story about all these Internet of Things, which is probably one of the biggest buzz uh, at the end of, uh, of 2014, is a story where we see that every five years we change the buzz world which is dominating the industry. So it, gone, it comes from portable digital connected. Uh, from 2010, everything is smart smart bikes, smart TVs, smart dogs, everything. Even people are getting smarter, by the way, so everything is becoming smart. I'm not sure about, about that. Um, and for 2015, I was, I was just forecasting that wearable would be the word, not only the one I'm wearing here, but uh, all the things which are definitely changing the way you're, you're considering your body. So if you think about that, you think that it's a story about, uh, the, the, it's a computing story where power is moving from a ground. If you think of the computers in the 60s, it's a full ground to have the, exactly the same power than you have in the Google Glass today. So in a little uh, thing that you have next to your eye. Uh, it's also a story about sensors being incorporated in smartphones and suddenly everybody thinks everything will be in the smartphones and no, it's not possible because of the weight, accuracy, battery, etc. So uh, everybody start, is starting to create some uh, dedicated devices that are incorporating the, those sensors. And uh, that's challenging the way we were seeing the smartphone evolution where we were starting to think about those modular smartphones. I need, uh, I don't know, I need a, um, something for communication, then I need a printer, and I'm just putting different layers in my smartphone to get it even smarter. And uh, this vision has been totally uh, replaced by the idea of the hub, and now you have the smartphone being the hub of all the other devices you have around you. And uh, what it's applying to you is the same in the house where uh, the box is the gateway for all the devices to the, to the network. So uh, in fact, we're recreating that story. And uh, for, for those who remember, the, uh, in French, we were calling him the l'homme qui valait 3 milliards, the 3 billion dollar man. I don't know why in the US it's a six million dollar man. <coughs> and you see that uh, the good thing is that uh, the woman has no price. She's really priceless. Nobody speaks about that because she was uh, a fortune. So we're, we're just recreating that story of the augmented man. And um, even very serious analysts, like strategy analytics, they are now creating categories uh, by putting the devices uh, somewhere on the body. So you have wrist devices, you have uh, things you wear on the, on the feet, etc., etc. Uh, the first one, very well known, was not very connected, but the, the, the first, very visible, well, this one, in, in fact, has a, its own category, which is the devices that are just putting the hospital closer to your house, to your house in fact, uh, in particular for your kids. Um, it's a brand, it's a gigantic success. It's not very connected, but um, okay. When you see that, everybody's thinking, okay, it's a device for sports fans, for people who, that just want to do extreme things. Um, but when it turns to that kind of devices, 
In fact, it's not the real name, it has changed, it's not Mimoto, it's a Swedish uh, startup. Um, it is a device, it's, it's our legal department favorite because it's taking a picture every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, it's taking the picture of who's in front of you, uh, where you are, etc. So you see that immediately this story about object is taking us into a privacy topic. It's a story about your life being put somewhere in clouds, in data, etc. Um, of course, there are plenty of other devices or in the sport uh, area. There were already a lot of them, uh, but uh, what has been existing in sport is now existing in wellness, in health, uh, for consumer being patients, for carers, for if you want to watch your baby, if you want to follow your cat when he's just running in the streets, you have pet cams, you have a lot of things which are just uh, <coughs> showing how creative are startups um, and how uh, VCs are putting money in that industry. Uh, and you have a lot of other things. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about the connected fork, the connected toothbrush. The good news is that the connected fork and toothbrush, they are French. <laughs> you see, we are always uh, around, the, around that. You, you can watch your postures, you can uh, work on your breath of matter. Uh, this one is not French. If you just want to be sure that you can drive you and you haven't been drinking too much. So a lot of devices, very creative, uh, and uh, you're suddenly moving also now to uh, a, new, um, a new domain where it's no longer the wearables, but more the, the invisibles. This means you will have devices on you because it will be uh, on your, uh, even in your clothes, you will, you will have all those sensors without wearing anything. And that's probably the next step after the, the, the wearables. If we're thinking of some of those devices, we're seeing clearly that they are no longer objects, but they're in, in fact new interfaces. And that's the case of all those uh, brain trackers. This one is the Muse from a Canadian company. And uh, you can also uh, have this kind of, uh, if you watch the video on YouTube, you will understand that this one is the second in the category of the devices that are putting the hospital closer to your house. Um, if you dare to, to control your, your, your board, your skateboard with that. Um, it's also the case for the Mayo from Talmic Labs. You put that on your arm and it takes all your, your, uh, your uh, uh, movement, uh, what your muscles are, are sending as information, it converts that into gesture, uh, into um, uh, moves for the robots, for anything you want to drive. Uh, second kind of interfaces, if you think of the watches, they are interfaces. They are interfaces in the world where uh, a smartphone, the smartphone has, has become so wide that you prefer to keep that in the pocket to be sure it won't be stolen and you need a second screen to control that. This is the case of the, of the, of the watch. Uh, this is the case of the second phone. Some people are starting to have a second phone which is a slave phone for the first one and they're using the small one to control the big one. That's pretty crazy, but uh, it's like that. So the, this, um, and the, um, this is also the way we are seeing the glasses. And um, um, <coughs> even if now some people are saying that it's uh, OK glasses uh, cancel the project. No, it's not only that. It's a, very, it's a great device which has moved forward, but it's a step towards something which is just changing the perception and the, the interface that uh, we may have thanks to those objects. And uh, we're also doing, at Orange, we're, we're also playing with telepresence solutions, which are these new kind of interfaces, uh, which is, it's a connected object, but in the same time, it's not an object which is gathering anything, it's just a way to be present. And instead of me, you, you, you may have only uh, you be on the stage, uh, just participating and interacting with you. And it's the kind of thing that, that is changing the interface to the world. So what is applying to people with wearables is applying in each and every domain. For instance, with cars, uh, with the new dongles appearing, you can now connect the car uh, to, uh, to a wide ecosystem of services only because the car is able to grab all the data and suddenly to give information about your driving habits or have the car being able to pay the, the, me the meter system by itself or to send info, uh, information to your house to say, okay, start cooking, I'm the, the, the car is coming. 
and um, and just to pay tribute to the one of the first connected objects I don't know yeah, do you remember that one yeah raise your hands if you remember whoa uh, raise your hands if you you have bought one Wow still impressive raise your hands if you were you you are still playing with it oh <laughs> congratulations <laughs> I'm impressed so the, the, the genius behind that, Raphael Adjian, is always five years or ten years ahead of everybody. And he was saying that in this, um, it, it was the first step of his two-step strategy for the Internet of Things. Number one, connect the rabbits. Number two, connect the rest. And uh, the rest is what he's doing with that. Um, where the device is not the, um, is not the matryoshka, it's the, the small cookie that you have uh, down here and which is basically the generic object that you can put on each and every uh, uh, device to make it connected because it includes accelerometer, etc. So uh, um, when we were trying to compile figures about uh, this phenomenon, the Internet of Things, we found ourselves with a big headache. So uh, if you put all the, f the figures, the only thing you can, uh, you can summarize is that it will be big, even huge. Okay, that's true. Uh, and that all those devices, they mainly uh, bring some data. And that's the important part. Because everybody's thinking and, and obsessed with the objects, even the, uh, the customers. But in fact, the real story is behind that. The, 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 the story is in the data that uh, those objects are producing. And um, if you apply that to some domains, for instance, in the health and wellness, there is something which is well known, is that what you can track you're able to know, and what you can know, you can enhance. And this story is something that I've applied to myself. So I'm, I'm a former geek, but, geek, but I'm a, an active quantify self uh, follower, uh, where I'm tracking, I've, I have five years of uh, data on my steps, uh, nights, etc. And I've been, I've been doing that for, for, for sleep. I, I, I used to think that I was a kind of superman being able to sleep for four hours a night and I feel the difference now simply because I'm following the rule that any physician, any doctor knows from the, the 50s that you have to sleep seven to nine hours a night unless you're a developer uh, and uh, you are, uh, yeah, I know, uh, um, no offense, that's, uh, I used to be. Um, uh, and by the way, starting at 9 a.m. for developers, uh, that was the time I was ending myself. Um, so I've, I've just used, thanks to a device which is giving you figures, etc., then you're able to change something. And this behavior change is one example of what, is, what can exist thanks to services that are using those objects. And there are people who are getting further. Those German guys, uh, now called Dakadu, they consider that they give you a, um, a health score. So if you are at 1,000, you are in perfect health. <coughs> and if you are at zero, you are dead. This is what they're saying. I, I just can imagine people uh, watching every morning. Oh, two this morning. Okay, yeah, I'm just staying in bed and, and forget the day. That's the point. Um, it's a bit scary. So if, if you think about users behind that and the typology of early users, you see that there are people that are coming to that because they are sports fan, geeks, uh, either patient because they have to wear those devices, but we see that everything is going to be extended because those devices, it's already, already the case when you see the quantified self movement in the US, um, those devices are going to be adopted also because there are a bunch of services around that and some companies, uh, for instance, this guy in the, just predicting that data is a kind of new oil and you can create a lot of things out of that. So uh, we're saying that in a way it's, it would be a kind of third age of the internet where if you consider all the data coming from the devices plus all the digital traces, things you're just having on the social networks when you're tweeting that you're going to the hairdresser, uh, all those elements, they are putting the world into data. And this is the major phenomenon of those, uh, those years. Um, the perception of the world is getting accurate through data. And uh, if you're thinking of the Internet of Things landscape by the companies which are just around that, you have to consider that even if there are a lot of companies and even if on only the wearables by itself is a very big uh, thing, it's only a little slice in a very large environment. 
any topic I may speak about, was it connected car, was it wearables, health, wellness, is only a little slice of a very ma major, very big thing. And um, in this, uh, watching that, the, the only question we have uh, in Europe is, are we going to simply behave like those nice animals and watch the train pass? Uh, it's the, the only question we have, or do we have to do something? And in fact, I think our intention is to be able to create the ecosystem that will definitely leverage that um, and face this challenge, which is it's only a, a projection of the, the quantity of data that is going to be stored in servers. In 2020, you see we're speaking of zettabytes. So, um, okay, I, I used to remember that we were trying to create those PETA, KIKA, etc. Now it's zettabytes. Um, and, um, and half of that is normally uh, coming from the Internet of Things, for the, from the connected objects. So when, when you think about all these data, even if you put them into order, if you're putting them on the in, uh, correct uh, space and, and, and location, you have this accumulation. But if you're just doing some accumulation without any meaning, without any direction, you're having that. And when you're showing that to customers, they're saying, OK, it's nice, but I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to express anything because the, the, I'm just facing the tyranny of choice. I have too much choice. So um, being able to uh, give directions into data is fundamental. The second story and the second risk uh, in, that, uh, in, in that growing uh, environment is the idea that all those objects will turn our stores uh, into a gadget store. And even if the lady is a nice one, uh, she's, she's just, uh, she's, you know, she's smiling, she's happy to be in the store, but maybe all those gadgets are going to end up their lives in the shoebox where you put all the gadgets you've been playing with for one week or two. If you have no service behind that, if you have no uh, solution which is changing uh, customer life daily, then those objects are transforming themselves into gadgets. And for sure, if we're speaking of a further, further idea, and I was starting with that one, everything you're touching on those stories is really linked to privacy, to data means security, means every time you're speaking about your customer personal life. And, uh, and you have to be sure that you're not doing things which are threatening this privacy, because everything is, is, is personal with that. So um, as a matter of fact, for Europe and in particular in France, we're just uh, in a kind of giant competition uh, on data. And we just want to make sure that we're playing a role because, you know, in new sports, very often everybody's taking part and uh, at the end of the race, the podium is a little bit like that. So they're, they're great girls. I'm very happy that, uh, to, to hear the Star Spangled Banner, but this means that uh, Europe has been... Uh, has not been able to be a global player. So um, this is why we're, we're, we're just trying to develop some collaboration with a lot of companies on that to be able to, to have a certain level of magnitude. And uh, <coughs> obviously on this Internet of Things, as said before, we consider that the object is nothing compared to the services. The object is the incarnation of the service, but the service is really more important. And so we're making this very intimate link between uh, the objects, the Internet of Things, and the data. Um, and when we think about what we could do in terms of uh, in the telco business, of course, we're distributing objects, we're bringing connectivity, not only because we have SIM cards in M2M devices, but for instance, when you have, uh, you have necklaces for dogs or when you have uh, D-shirts, digital shirts, connected clothes, we are just bringing the, the little module called POPs that will help uh, this device connect to the network. Uh, we're delivering and we've started to deliver connected services, for instance, with Home Live in France, which is a smart home solution. And we're starting uh, to, to, to bring uh, uh, data solutions to be uh, a data operator and not only a, a, a telecommunication operator. So I'm skipping the business model. You will have it uh, later. 9 a.m. is too early to speak about business models. There will be plenty of. Just to spend a few minutes on the idea, are those stories useful or scary? Well, both, for sure. 
because we've been speaking about privacy, security, etc. Because you've seen those stories about drones being uh, just driven on top of uh, of a nuclear plant, etc. Um, uh, it, it's uh, there. Are, there are plenty of opportunities and threat, and this is why we started the story at Orange by signing a charter. This is what our CEO has done uh, more than one year ago. Is is sign a charter to say even without doing anything on that market, let's make sure that we're respecting our customer rights, that we're we're giving him as much security as possible, control thanks to a personal dashboard, transparency and support because those are complicated story, and we know perfectly that with that, we're going we're going to be attacked, we're going to be hacked. It's it's obvious, but it's not because people are going to try to steal some data that we are not doing anything. We're ju we just have to make sure that we're making the best possible efforts and we're getting the best results, the best possible results that we can. And, um, and it's, it's uh, the new story about cybersecurity, etc. We, we're not going to give up and say, okay, we don't want to enter in that, into that world. That world is here. Uh, and we just have to make sure that we're making the best um, to, to secure the, the, the privacy of our customers. And for us, we have a clear commitment on the idea that um, <coughs> the, our, our customer data belongs to our customer. So uh, and anything we do, we ask them, or we, 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 we're making sure that the data is being anonymized uh, in, in case we have to use that in a, in a way that is not possible to get back to any personal information. So um, I'm not going to give you examples of the definition. I'm just going directly to the story about uh, what we're doing about, uh, on the data. Uh, we've announced a platform called Data Venue. And this platform is just here to uh, aggregate a lot of things. It's not doing all the things possible because it's a platform in an ecosystem. So this means that a lot of other companies are doing a lot of other things. But what Orange is doing in that is bringing five things, which are collecting the data, storing the data, securing the data, aggregating the data, and finally giving access to the people through APIs. So it's a pretty simple story. Uh, we consider that those infrastructure tasks, etc., are what Orange can bring to that, and all the rest, the analytics, the services, etc., are going to be brought by some of their companies. So we started that story in October with a few partners, uh, and basically it's like that. You have all the objects which are just uh, giving some, some, putting some data in the system through APIs. Um, uh, you have. Uh, companies or you have open data sources being uh, aggregated through data APIs and uh, in that you have three different parts. You have a B2B part which is just about um, doing things with the data coming from the, uh, the IoT, giving uh, opportunities for object maker to store their data to use the platform as uh, their platform. Uh, we have some B2B2C things where people can create some services and uh, distribute them to the customers and those services are going to use data. And we have a big, big data part where people can crunch and cross uh, data sources. And of course, all of this is, uh, is being opened through BIs on these, uh, on these different segments. So um, this platform is um, is really something that we're ex we're just going to um, to um, expose through our um, uh, Orange Partner site, where you have all the other APIs we're we're doing, and you 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 may be familiar with that. That we're just um, uh, distributing some APIs. We have some self-service APIs that are uh, our way to create these new business opportunities with partners uh, and, and with Orange. And um, it, it is um, those APIs, they're here to serve the developer needs. And uh, we've been in that, uh, that API story since 2006. So uh, it, it's been a while. We've, start, we've done that once. The APIs were not simple enough, etc. It was quite hard for us, a telco in a closed environment at that time, to expose some APIs. But I think we've challenged ourselves in order to understand what you uh, need yourself um, and uh, to bring something which is very easy to use, well documented with SDK, etc., uh, etc., et and uh, and something that is usable. And uh, 
Uh, it's one of the things we're doing in the ecosystem. We're not only doing APIs, we're also working with a lot of startups through uh, the Orange Fab Accelerator. We're part of uh, several partnerships which are built on top of these APIs. We have also some, some ways of getting uh, applications being tested by real customers, etc. And this story about Data Venue will add one thing to the things we're doing today, where we have cloud identity, user details, store locator APIs. All this is available on, on the Orange Partner website, and you will have these data venue, data APIs available soon. Um, and, um, and we'll extend that to other countries, to uh, some other topics like the beacons, etc. So um, you just have to join us, and on that story, um, uh, you will have at 11.15 today, you have a workshop where you can know more with, uh, with Thierry, with Renaud, uh, and with uh, Nicolas, uh, with Nicolas, with uh, Mathieu, sorry. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have a lot to tell about that, and if you want to, to, to stop and, and chat with, uh, with Alexia in our booth, uh, she will tell you more about that. So um, just to, to end up with that, uh, just how we've started the story about uh, Data Avenue. Uh, instead of building the platform for during three years and after that coming on the stage and say, hey, it's available, now use that. Uh, we've done that a different way. In fact, we've done the minimum viable platform. It's a new MVP. Uh, and uh, we've, we've developed that. And then we've started to engage some partners, big companies and smaller ones, into a challenge where we've just tried to have data coming from those partners, from Malakoff Mederic, from Societe Generale, from Suez Environnement, or for smaller companies like Netatmo or Alef1 Accelerator, which is the, uh, the uh, incubator behind Radioline or the, the connected toothbrush Colibri, or Seb, that you know pretty well. And they've just brought some data. We've started the first phase, uh, which is a contest, which has been a contest where people were given five themes from uh, cooking, good to be home, sociability, to uh, quantified self, and they were first bringing some ideas uh, on our Imagine by, or by Orange platform, with Orange platform. Uh, and this platform is, uh, we've been gathering 320 ideas. They have been curated, etc. Nicolas Brie is here, has done an incredible job just to take all the ideas coming from that. Uh, and uh, in that, people were just bringing some ideas about connected bottles, uh, I don't know, a lot of things, very creative, some services as well. Uh, then we've moved to a second phase where startups and companies were bringing some, um, some ideas. And tonight, in the Ozon La France exhibition starting a few miles from here in Grand Palais, we're going to give uh, the prizes to, uh, with our partners to uh, six companies who've done a great job by defining what they will do with this data, with this data platform, with these connected objects. Uh, and it's the second step of the story. The third step of the story we're starting now is just with people starting to use the platform to prototype some services. Uh, and uh, more and more, they will, um, uh, they will, uh, they will be more, more numerous using the platform uh, with us uh, and with uh, the partners that, uh, that we've, uh, we've gathered. So this is what, what I wanted to share with you. I'm ending with that picture, which is one of the quantified self uh, hero picture. Where, you know, in, in the quantified self, we just want to be like that. It's a little geeky, by the way. We just want to create this, that, uh, that object, uh, tricoder, you know, the one with which you know immediately uh, how's your, your patient. And uh, even if normally uh, Dr. Mark Coy is doing that, not, uh, not Spock. But uh, this is the, the way we are. We just would like to, to see this story about the uh, IoT and, and data uh, changing the world. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, great talk. So we have time for questions uh, from the audience. I don't see raising hands. Because I'm, I may, oh, we have one there. Uh, I, may, I may have a first one, uh, just were working there. So you, you talk a lot about privacy. And it's really, uh, it's the first time I see a, a talk uh, that begins mainly, um, that, that talks so much about privacy. So why was I, I, uh, as Orange, as an industry, 
uh, and industrial, you, you, you talk about privacy like, um, um, uh, l like this and why it's important. Because I've, I've seen a lot of Internet of Things talk and it's really the thing that it's really at the end just for questions and, and the companies avoid the subject. Why you put it uh, uh, so strong uh, in, your, in your talk? Um, good question. Um, it's, um, it's very uh, important for us because uh, I think that people were, are not conscious or were not uh, as conscious as they, they would have to be uh, um, with regards to privacy. And I remember some discussions I had with startups in, the, in San Francisco a few years ago where, uh, f with some features, we were not speaking about the Internet of Things by, by itself, but I was telling them uh, it's not good in terms of privacy. And they were telling me, oh, this is a very old Europe way of seeing, thi seeing things. So uh, I was not chatting with Donald Rumsfeld or George Bush, I can, I can tell you, but they were really considering that. And, um, uh, so we were a bit different in the way we were perceiving that if you, com if you were comparing France and Germany to how the uh, US citizens were seeing that. That was the world before Edward Snowden. And now I think the perception of that has changed a bit. But it has changed in terms of, okay, maybe the government can do something that I don't want them to do. But here in Europe, let's say that we, we are we're pretty in peace with the government. I'm not saying anything political here, but we're, we're considering that they are doing that for, for us. But it doesn't mean that there are a lot of threats, a lot of things which are hidden. If you're taking only the cybersecurity uh, figures, you will see that it's becoming one of the major and one of the main forms of criminality in the world. So we simply consider that it's a very important topic, it's a very complex topic, and it is something on which uh, we have a role to, to help our customers. So this is why it's, it's being treated as, uh, as important as that. We're very conscious of the importance and we want to help the customer uh, react and, and live with that. So I, I really think it's courageous to put it in the slide and in the talk, so th thank you for that. Thank you Thanks. for the users. Hi. Um, question for you. Do you think there is still some future of the uh, telco business model, or would you consider that Orange is gearing towards a uh, SaaS vendor? That's my first question. And uh, the other one would be linked into data venue. What's the next step? To the? Data venue, what's the next step? Because you started something and just want to know what would be the, the next step in terms of development. Okay, I, I, I haven't heard at all the, the second question. What, what is the next step for data venue? The next step for data venue, that's it? Yeah. Um, so your, your, your first question, I have to concentrate, focus on first, not to. Um, so, uh, second question, next step on Data Avenue. First question, <laughs> telco business model. Well, we're pretty well. Everything's okay. No, uh, I think that um, we, um, it's obvious that um, we still need networks, we still need faster networks, we still need capacity, we still need the best possible networks but um, for the last 25 years, at least, everybody is seeing that and seeing that operators are becoming pipes and pipes and pipes. And so if you just look at the, the market cap, you're seeing that, of course, uh, we're not considered as valuable and uh, uh, that we, we used to be. And so our business models are still bringing value but uh, we, we, ha we are facing a lot of um, uh, competition, a lot of um, uh, things which are moving uh, our, our revenues and which are just uh, putting some pressure on those revenues. And the main impact on that, um, as I'm seeing them myself, is that uh, we are more and more 
in the in the tricky uh, and in the, in the complex um, uh, posture when it when it's about investing in the networks. Well, we need to invest in the network, and it's obvious that all the telcos have to invest in the networks to be sure that the digital economy is going to to take advantage of that. And uh, the revenues we're getting out the out of the uh, uh, of, of the networks is diminishing. So at some point in time, that may be raising some problem. So um, I think that with that in mind, it's obvious that we have to change and to see um, what are the potential things in which we can spend some time and bring some, uh, some skills. And this is why we've seen that the data story is a place where we can bring some infrastructure for cloud, for data stories. Uh, then we're in a good position to bring some added services that will create some uh, added um, uh, revenue streams. So the telco business model is not dead, is endangered for sure, and we have to bring other uh, sources as well, uh, which are uh, things we can do and which are not very far from our business. Yeah. And so the second part of your question was the next step for Data Avenue. So uh, <coughs> we are going to um, to create, um, uh, we are going to transform uh, the. Um, uh, the challenge into a permanent thing, which would be called the Data Avenue Partner Program. It will be hosted in the Orange Partner Program, and this is the place where we're going to do a lot of things with the ecosystem, where the platform is going to have more and more features and capacity, and uh, when we, we will have um, uh, good opportunities to work with startups and companies that just want to be part of the, that, uh, that data story. And there were no third question. Yeah. Okay, no. To follow up with uh, the, that, the networking and the, the business model, uh, it's good to develop some new project, but uh, when will my mother in a uh, little village in Burgundy get the correct ADSL connection without any cut every week? You know, you are investing a lot in new project, in Parisian type of project, but the rest of France is not aware of that. Uh, we're doing things everywhere, and uh, if you just think of the companies we had on the first promotion of the Orange Fab, uh, they were coming from Montpellier, they were coming from several places, so um, we, are, we, have, we are probably one of the, the players in the digital space. We have people everywhere in France and in 32 countries uh, for the consumer offers, so uh, we are, we're really trying to do things where, where they are. We, we were a partner of the Hackathon in, uh, in, uh, with Nice uh, Metropole. Uh, we are we're really trying, we were uh, in Rennes uh, in, in, uh, with Image Réseau uh, doing things around Fireware a few weeks ago, so we, we are on, we're not doing things only in Paris and we don't, we don't want to do things only in Paris. Thank you very much, Patrice. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good day.